The goal is to make treasures and smash face. But you may be wondering how. Of course, with the Balrog, Durant's Bane, the seven mana creature that's a seven five that costs one less for each permanent sacrifice this turn. It has haste, it can be blocked except by legendary creatures, and when it dies, you get to destroy an artifact or creature an opponent controls. Trying to remember everything on this card is kind of like trying to remember everything on Questing Beast. To help the deck function, we have things like Goldspan Dragon, Blood Money, and Brass's Bounty. These are going to be key for mid to late game. And with those big mana spells, we have things that can hurt our opponent just from us sacrificing or creating treasure tokens. There's also cards in the deck that make treasures on ETB. Swashbuckler Extraordinaire can also give double strike to the Balrog. Then to top it all off, if we ever need to destroy a creature and we don't have any removal in hand, we can always use one of our sack outlets. The rest of the deck list is in the description below. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite decks from the set. All right, we're up against Urza, Prince of Krug. I'm going to keep this hand... Love the fleshy swick. We're going to play our swamp turn one. Opponent plays their tapped land. We play our mountain. Nothing too serious happening yet. Opponent plays their island. Then they play Wrecking or Bank Buster, which is going to scare me a lot. Not really. We play our swamp and we're going to play Black Market Connections. Set ourselves up pretty big. Gives us a treasure every turn at least. They're going to play Luminarch Aspirant, which isn't really scary at first but it can get scary over time. Black Market Connections triggers, we're gonna make a treasure token and a creature token. We're gonna to play our Sulfur Springs and we're gonna play Ashnod's Altar. Really setting ourselves up here for the next few turns. Our opponent plays Annex Sentry, which is gonna exile our Ashnod's Altar because everyone knows how crazy and busted that card is. They're gonna put the counter on Luminarch Aspirant. They're gonna tap it to crew the Bank Buster and we're gonna take four. Goes to our turn, Black Market Connections triggers. We're going to make a treasure and draw a card. Don't want to lose too much life. We play our Swamp. Sack our treasures. We're going to play our Balrog for five mana. And this is pretty sweet because Balrog can't be blocked now because nothing on their battlefield can block it. So we just swing in with a big seven damage. Goes to our opponent and they play Thought Monitor. Draws them some cards. And then goes to combat, put the counter on the Aspirant, crew the Bank Buster again. Now we're getting swung out for eight. We're going to block the Aspirant, and then we're going to plumb the Forbidden. Sacrifice in our token to draw two cards, actually, off of this. Take the four, go down to eight. Black Market Connections triggers. We don't want to lose too much life now, so we just make a treasure. Play a Swamp. Play our Play Crafter. We're going to sack the Playcrafter, they sack their Thought Monitor, and we're going to play Labelia. At least get some treasure off of that creature going to the graveyard. Then we're going to swing in for another 7. And it's not looking too good for our opponent, but it's also looking pretty scary for us. They play Arcanist Owl. Searching for something, they get Tempered Steel. Then they play Rally the Ranks. Which is pretty scary. They crew... From the Arcanus Owl, crew the Bank Buster, give the counter to the Annex Entry, and now we're facing down Lethal. Except our opponent doesn't know what we have, so we block the five. Use a treasure to sack the Balrog. We're gonna kill the Bank Buster. We're gonna draw two cards. And we take three. Go down to four. Black Market Connection triggers. We'll just pay one for the treasure. And I want you to look at this board state for a second. Do you think we could win from this position? Let me know down in the comments what you chose. After moments of thinking it over, I finally realized I can play this Brass's Bounty. It will use up all of our mana from the lands that we have, but we'll make a ton of treasures. And since Captain Lannery Storm has haste and also gets a buff from us sacrificing treasures, I figured we can use it to not only get lethal in, but also since the Balrog has haste as well, we can cast our commander and just swing for lethal here. And that is how the Balrog operates. Very solid game. Okay, we're up against the Witch King of Angmar. I keep this hand just specifically because of the ramp. Play a mountain turn one. 
They play Short Sword. Very scary. Okay, we play Arcane Signet turn two, ramping up pretty quickly here. And our opponent does as well. They play Mindstone. We play a Swamp, and then we play Jadar. We now have things to sacrifice. Goes to our opponent, and they play Phyrexian Arena. We goes to us, we play a Mountain, and we play Grim Hireling. Then we're going to swing at our opponent for three damage, making two treasures in the process, thanks to Grim Hireling. Really sweet card. Goes to our opponent, they draw, then they play the Witch King with no way to protect it. I guess they feel safe because of the indestructible. Who cares? We play big score, toss the hour of devastation, make more treasures. Play a mountain, and we're gonna sacrifice our treasure to give us a black source, which I don't know why we did that because we have the arcane signet, but whatever. And we're going to sack three treasures to make our opponent's witch king get minus three, minus three. Then we're gonna swing out for six damage and make two treasures in the process. If you guys if you guys don't have Grim Hireling, what are you waiting for? This video should convince you. We pay two mana to cast the Balrog, which is insane. Goes to our opponent. They play Yargle and equip the short sword to it. So now it's a 10 4. But our opponent didn't learn the lesson from last time. Goes to us. We play the one ring. Draw a card off of it. And we're going to swing. With the Balrog, of course they don't block the Balrog, and they let us get damage through. Making more treasures. Activate Grim Hireling's ability. Making Yargu get a minus two, minus two, thanks to us sacrificing two treasures. And it dies, and it goes to our opponent. And they play the Witch King again, with no mana open. The only way to protect it is indestructible by tapping it. And discarding a card. Goes to us. We play a land and play Blood Artist. And we just swing out. And our opponent is confused here. What is that? Seeing what they could do. Okay, they choose to block the Balrog. Give it indestructible, but that won't save you, my friend. Because we have lethal on board. And that's how that Balrog operates. Alright, we're up against Adeline Resplendent Cathar. I mulligan that first hand because it was trash. And this hand's kind of trash too, but it's okay. We have blood money for a very, very crazy board. Our opponent plays Copper Coat Vanguard, which is a really good card in Adeline deck. We start the game off by playing Jadar. Nothing too crazy. Our opponent plays Adeline. And they're starting off really strong. Very, very strong. Very, very aggro strategy here. We play our command tower, we swing with the zombie, I don't know why I did that. Don't mind me, goes our opponent, they play Mindstone and Mace of the Valiant. They swing out of course, because what do they have to lose? We block with Jadar and take 6 damage because we're going to play Blood Money next turn. We play Dark Ritual, play Blood Money, wipe the board, make 2 treasures in the process. And pass the turn. Opponent plays Mentor of the Meek, which gets them a counter on the mace. Then they play Rising Populous. Alright, it's our turn. We're gonna play Goldspan Dragon. Swing in, make the treasures. Didn't realize this till I was editing, but I could have played the Balrog here. Even before I swung with the Goldspan Dragon. But we're just gonna play at Sushi. Good thing I didn't play the Balrog because Elspeth Conqueror's Death just came down. Atsushi does not trigger because it's exile. We take four from them swinging in. Our turn, we play the Nykthos, sacrifice our treasure for two mana. And we're going to play Balrog. Then play our Swifty Boots. We're going to equip the Swifty Boots to the Goat's Band Dragon. Doing a ton of damage to our opponent, making a treasure. Our opponent goes, and we take four more. And they play Realm Cloak Giant to clear the board, which is very smart by them because they would have lost next turn. Balrog Death Triggers, and we're going to destroy the Mace. Goes our turn. We didn't draw really anything except the Mountain. We sack a treasure. Play the Balrog. Equip them with this Whiff of Boots, even though 
doesn't matter because it already has haste, but it does give them the hexproof. We do seven damage, they go down to three. They return the Copper Coat Vanguard. Then they replay Adeline. And they play Maul of the Skyclave, which is very bad for us. We swing in because we have nothing else to do. They block with the Adeline. That's the only creature they can block with. We play the Rhea Sibling Skeleton. And it's not looking too good for us. Our opponent plays Adeline again. They swing in with a Copper Coat Vanguard. With flying, does 5 damage to us. We block with the Reassembling Skeleton. We replay the Reassembling Skeleton. And now we have Woe Strider. And this is where the mistake is made. I swing in. They block with the Adeline. They sacrifice their Mindstone to draw a card. We play the Woe Strider. And I'm going to pause the game right here real quick. You see, what was supposed to happen was, when Woe Strider hit the battlefield, we sacrificed the Balrog, destroying the Maul of the Skyclaves, and leaving Reassembling Skeleton, Woe Strider, and the Goat to block the attacks for next turn. The next turn after that, we could play the Balrog and actually win the game. But that's not what happened. I just did not see this play when I was playing this game, so our opponent hits for lethal, and we'll lose. Go ahead, grill me in the comments. Here's some other games to show that the deck isn't perfect.